Now, I'll enter into these now as uh, kind of a uh, uh, rapid. I hope I'm not talking too fast, but I, I kind of wanted to introduce this to you in uh, sort of this stepwise fashion so I can show you kind of the results that we've ran into in our laboratory efforts. Our hypothesis was that if we were able to feed or present a, a, a form of copper, zinc, and manganese that was more insoluble, wouldn't dissolve in the neutral pH of the mouth, that the animals would not have that aversive reaction to intake. And they would consume the, 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 the mineral fortified supplement better. That, that was really just our simple approach. And so we decided to look at these hydroxy sources of copper, zinc, and manganese because they're known to be lesser soluble at neutral pH. And we compared them in these mineral concentrated limit creep feed supplements to traditional sulfate oxide forms and also commercially available organic sources of the same elements. We started off by running four studies, and we called these our preferential intake studies. What, and what we did is just simply took young calves and we gave them the opportunity to select what they wanted to eat. We gave them three diets, and the three diets were supplements that were formulated identical but differed only by the source of copper, zinc, and manganese. Okay, that was the only difference. And then we just measured what they preferred to consume. It was a very traditional, uh, simple approach. We did it by removing the calves were in a dry lot pen. We removed all their feed at 10 o'clock in the morning, and then we gave them this, uh, these three supplement options for a four-hour period. Okay, so the calves started when they were satiated, and then they had four hours to uh, select what they wanted. So they weren't hungry, right? They weren't hungry when we started these. We gave them a period where they could sort of work their way into wanting to consume them. So here's just an example of one of the pens, and in here are three polyfiber tubs containing the exact same supplement differing only by the sources of copper, zinc, and manganese. And so here are the results of the four studies. Copper, zinc, and manganese, when fed alone in every example, they preferred to consume the supplement containing the hydroxy form of each of those elements compared to the sulfate or organic form. Each of these means, if you add them together, they total 100%. So this is the percent of total intake. Now, when we took and combined them all together, which represented the free choice uh, limit, I'm sorry, which represented that limit creep supplement that I showed you earlier, which the calves wouldn't eat, they almost exclusively consumed the diet containing the hydroxy form of copper, zinc, and manganese. So this uh, really, we got excited about this. I, I think I, I believed at the beginning that this would help describe some of the problem, maybe help solve some of the problem with intake. I didn't really believe it would solve all of the problem. And so we took what we learned here and we went back into, immediately into a two-year study looking at limit-fed creep calves right at that weaning period, concentrated, mineral concentrated supplements comparing these hydroxy sources. It was done over two years. We had three treatments, no mineral, hydroxy forms of copper, zinc, and manganese, or sulfite sources of copper, zinc, and manganese. Fed those calves for 84 days prior to weaning, limited to a quarter of a pound a day. That was, what they were, that was the limit creep approach. And just go right into the results. If we look at it over a period of time, those calves ate the sulfate form pretty good this time, but not as well as they consume the hydroxy sources. And the hydroxy sources were not different from the, the supplement containing no mineral. So they consumed the supplement as if there were no mineral in it at all. In fact, there was a 26% increase in intake when we used the copper, zinc, and manganese from hydroxy chloride versus sulfate sources. And these were data that we just published in the Journal of Animal Science a few months ago. So, what happened with mineral status of those calves? Well, there's no difference between the hydroxychloride treatment and the sulfate treatment, but when we combine them both together, compared to no mineral, they did have greater mineral status by both by cobalt, copper, and selenium. But the only one that's really interesting is the selenium. 
The calves that were weaned from mineral supplemented limit creep had adequate selenium status. The calves weaned on the limit creep with no added mineral had inadequate selenium. Well, isn't that interesting? Selenium wasn't even part of our treatment. But yet when you feed a source of copper, zinc, and manganese that's more insoluble, you encourage intake, and so you get more selenium in them. And so it resulted in calves with greater selenium status. So these data uh, we have taken out to producers. We've worked with producers on the ranch, and we've even repeated them at our center. We find that when we use this limit creep approach that we can increase, and this is a 11-study uh, uh, 11, 11 average. We increase weaning weights by 19 pounds. That, more, that increase in 19 pounds more than pays for the supplement. I got excited about that. I thought this is a no-brainer. Everybody's going to do this. And guess how many people are doing it? Nobody. Nobody's going to do this. Nobody's going to go out for 80 days, 90 days, 60 days before weaning and hand feed their calves in a cow excluded area. It's just too much labor. Even for 19 pounds of added body weight, nobody's going to do this. So this was kind of disheartening for me because I think that we found a solution. We found something that works. We can wean calves that are mineral adequate, but, but it's just too much labor. So right now, uh, we're working with uh, Jim Drulliard from Kansas State University, and, and he's making these low moisture tubs uh, for us, and Micronutrients is helping us with uh, the sponsorship of this work. And we're looking at to see if we can use this as a free choice in a cow excluded area for a pre-weaning period, and will the calves consume that at amounts that will uh, be sufficient to optimize trace mineral status at the time of weaning with less labor inputs? And so we just finished the first um, uh, preferential intake uh, work on this, and, and so you're the first folks that get to see this. Those calves were weaned this morning. So we, are bi we biopsied those calves this morning on the second study, you know, the limit creep study. And uh, we'll have those data coming out real here real soon. But let me show you the preferential intake study. So these are weaned calves in eight replicate pastures. They have uh, concentrate supplement every day and grazing uh, winter pasture. But they also have three tubs out there. Identical formulation, but the copper, zinc, and manganese either comes from hydroxychloride, sulfate, or organic sources. If we look at total intake as a percent of those three treatments, we found just what we saw before, there's a preferential intake of that low moisture block if it's formulated with the lesser soluble uh, uh, forms of copper, zinc, and manganese, the hydroxychlorides, compared to the other two. So 